Hi, welcome back to our podcast, Books Not Review Themselves. I'm Jessica. And I'm Kim. And today we are reviewing Don't Forget Me, the Levi Can't Book One by B.C. Schiller. I'm just going to read the synopsis from Amazon quick. Five years, five messages. Can a killer hold the key? It's five years since psychiatrist Olivia Hoffman's husband and daughter vanished without a trace, and five years since the body of troubled teenager Lisa Manns was found murdered in a quarry outside Vienna. While the trail of Lisa's killer has gone cold, Olivia receives an anonymous postcard each year on the anniversary of her family's disappearance. Who is sending the messages and why are they sorry? When one of her patients claims he has seen Lisa alive, Olivia joins forces with Detective Levi Kant, who was taken off the murder case when he was close to finding answers. Is it possible Lisa is still alive? And is there a connection with Olivia's missing loved ones? But reopening the cold case will put Olivia and Levi in mortal danger. The killer is on to them and will stop at nothing to remain in the shadows. Can they bring the truth to light before they are silenced forever? Dun, dun, dun. So, I gave this book a two. And I would give this book a four. So I'm, <laughs> And I was, after I read it, I almost gave it a one because I'm like, Remember in the past how we were talking about authors wasting our time? Mm -hmm. I was just annoyed. And I'm like, screw you. You wasted my time. At least Mm -hmm. it was a fast-ish book. Let me see how many pages. I thought this one was only like 215. Yeah. So that was good. But still. So tell me what you loved about it or what you liked. I will say that this book is, I believe it was originally released in German. Mm -hmm. So it is a translated version. And so I don't think all the translation always come over super nicely just mm-hmm. because that's how it is. I liked the storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't want to say I enjoy kidnappings and like <laughs> but that. But you kind do. Of, but I kind of <laughs> do. Like I do enjoy I enjoy the that type of psychological thriller where it's like I prefer that over like a gruesome death, you know, body found. Like I do enjoy those too. Yeah. But I enjoy the fact that it's like okay that there's still questions and there's and there's things that can go wrong once you're murdered you're murdered whereas right a kidnapping there are many things that can go wrong. right where it's like that suspense of like mm-hmm. well, what happened are they going to find the killer like and that, so i really enjoyed that and i also really enjoyed how and the silent patient does this mm-hmm. i Kim's only have 100 pages left and i'll be done with the silent patient so i'm like 200 pages in <laughs> Ooh, okay. I tried to finish it last night, but I was so tired. I'm just like, I can't. Yeah. And the the thing I really like about psychological thrillers, which I think is kind of a given, is I like when they have one of the parties, how do I want to say this? They're not super reliable. Yeah, unreliable. Narrator. And I don't like when it's like, like a ditzy blah, blah, blah. Like, I like that with this one and the silent patient where it's like, they, I don't want to sound bad mean when I say like how they use mental health but like that's kind of the most common Mm because because in my opinion it's like I've worked at an assisted living before and I've worked with people who have like Alzheimer's and dementia and there are days where you get glimpses of the real person and there are days where like you learn about that person even though they're not fully themselves Mm -hmm. and so I feel like they like playing on that like with the schizophrenia and this was I I enjoy that because that adds a whole other level of like well did it happen did it not happen did they see what they actually saw Mm -hmm. or you know so you're kind of almost trying to decipher like was this just kind of like an uh, episode Episode? or Mm -hmm. you know so I enjoy that part of it too Mm -hmm. so what I was very I was excited when I started reading it because it's been a while since I've read like a police procedural like an actual real one right um and I I thought awesome this is going to be that and while it had some of it in it it really wasn't so right so that made me a little sad but I mean that wasn't the reason why I'm like two stars because the book is the book and since it's not a full-on police procedural that's fine what bothered me is and I know translation does not always carry over well, but the, and I know they're German or they're from Austria, but, you know, translated from German. And I know Harman, Harman, I know German can be a very harsh language. And I know 
stereotypically that Germans are not always the most emotional people, Mm -hmm. you know, which is, is fine. But this book, like the characters had no emotions to me. It was just, and it was like everyone, it wasn't just like, you know, one of the police officers or something. And I just, the dialogue too felt very, I think I know what entry to me. It, It was very, and to me, even if you're translating from another language, like if you write well, you know, you can add dimension to the dialogue or, I mean, I don't like flowy, flowery dialogue, so that's fine that it wasn't like that, but it was just, it was very stilted and harsh and every character was like that. And I'm just like, yeah, I get what you're saying. And I kind of, I feel like that more could be the translation because the thing is, is like you said, every culture, what their writing style and everything is so different and ours might be, you know, Mm -hmm. and I feel like I get what you're saying with that because it felt like very flat, maybe. Yes. Flat is perfect. Because like when you look at one of the main characters, Olivia, the psychiatrist, like her husband and daughter are like, they're fucking gone. And (laughs) there was never, there was very little emotion for it. Yeah, there wasn't a whole, and the other thing too that I think gives us perspective is, yes, this is translated and everything, but we're also doing a podcast on the book, The Chain, Mm. which has a lot of thrilling (laughs) and whatever, (laughs) and there's emotion because, I mean, it involves children and whatever, kind of like this, and this does not have a lot of that. And I feel like saying it's translated is like a cop out because uh, sure translator translates, but a translator can also like obviously talk with the authors and be like, you know, is this how you wanted it? Should we adjust it? You know what I mean? Right. But at the same token, thinking from the author's perspective, like how would I translate something that would be appealing to Germans? You know, mm-hmm. I have no idea what a German reader reads or like if I'm translating something to like Chinese, like what they like and what we like are so different. different. So they probably looked at this and was like, yeah, yeah, like this is perfect. Mm -hmm. But in our eyes, it's not what we're, it's definitely not something we're used to. And the other thing that really got me and I mean, to me between, you know, the stilted writing and like no emotion which is like the entire book. Yeah. And then this is also the entire book. The way the events happened, it was just like, it was just perfect. You know, there was no, it felt fake. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, that ties up too perfectly everything. I Yeah, I just, I didn't like that. <laughs> which is fine, because yeah. not every book is for every reader. So, yeah. And to like, the reasons that happened, like the various things, you know, with not Olivia, Lisa, you know, why she died and stuff. I'm just like, it felt like things were put in there just for shock value. You know, it's like, this is just me totally speculating, but it's like the author's like, maybe our book isn't like thrilling enough. So let's just throw in some shock for you. Yeah, and I'm just like, add something. and then the other thing. <laughs> is just when you were reading the synopsis, you know, um, five years, five messages, that is at the very beginning of the book and, like, the messages never come into play again. Yeah. Her family being missing, besides her not talking about it or being emotional through the entire book, it just comes into play at the very end. And, I mean, granted, a synopsis is different than a book, but if, if people read a synopsis, that's what gets them interested in the book. And if you're telling me the way that the synopsis to me was written was that they were also going to be trying to find out, you know, a mystery. Um, Within the messages. Yes. And with the the husband and the daughter. And you just give it to me the last 15, 20 pages of the book. Don't put in the synopsis then. Yeah. Because you think whatever's going to be in the synopsis is kind of a big key mm-hmm. thing of the book. And, and the way they it leave wasn't. it. I'm sure there'll be a book two besides the fact that it says Levi Kent book one. You know, they left it for book two, but don't give it to me here. You know, you should have like gave me the story of Lisa and then in the synopsis for book two, then give me the story of your husband and daughter, you know? Yeah. So that's why I was just annoyed all around. I, I just was. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, yeah. And so why else did you enjoy it? Because I feel bad. Because I don't want to be like, this book sucks. Don't read it. Because obviously it has good well, stuff about like, it. Well, and like, I I don't know. I guess, you know, I definitely see your points. And I think maybe others will. But I think I just enjoyed the story. Mm-hmm. And this was one that it was kind of a quicker read. So I didn't I didn't analyze it as much, I okay. guess. Because like you said, it is... It, it the way that it plays almost reminds me of like um SUV. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah. So just ex- expect that where it's gonna be like like you said with timing, like mm-hmm. everything just is it. perfect. Right. Between the commercial right. breaks. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's very much what this book was. So I just knowing that it was only two hundred and some pages, I guess maybe I went into it with not super high expectations, mm-hmm. but like yeah, I came away from it and I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I did finish it in a day, so that was that was nice. Mm-hmm. You know, I enjoyed that part of it. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. I mean, if you read future books and you tell me like the next one's really good, I would try another one. Mm-hmm. But you know, unless someone I knew and trusted told me that this one or other one of their series were good, I'd be like, I'm good. <laughs> I got other books. <laughs> yeah, and that's mm-hmm. fine. Oh, and the other thing we wanted to mention was the author B.C. Schiller. It's actually a husband and wife duo. Mm -hmm. Um, Which I think is cool. Yeah. We thought that was kind of interesting. So the it's Barbara and Christian Schiller. I never understood how you like write books as like a pair. Mm -hmm. Because there was a book by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekanen. I think that's how you say it. They have, I believe it's called Anonymous Girl. I don't remember which one I read, um, but it was phenomenal. But I was surprised that like... It was so good. Well, I just... How do you... How do two people, you know, like write a book together? Mm -hmm. And I mean, when it's done well, you know, that is wonderful. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I listened to that one. And I actually kind of want to, like, read it again okay. and do a review on it because I know I enjoyed it that much. Well, then. That's the other thing, too, is kind of going through some of my books that I've read that I really enjoyed and wouldn't mind reading again mm-hmm. so that I can, like, actually do it. I read An Anonymous Girl. Okay. So it's by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekenen. Um, The other book they have is called The Wife Between Us. And talking about people who write books together, I read a book. It's called A Study in Murder by Deborah Snow and R.J. Lewis. It was book one in the Holmes and Watkins romantic mystery series. That book was not good. It's like you could tell where one person wrote and finished their paragraphs or chapter and the other person began. It did not flow well together. The person writing the romance part, it just... I did not enjoy that. And the other thing that really stood out for me in that book, it was about um, a writing convention. And although I've never been to a writing convention, I've been to lots of comic conventions. And the way, if you are basing a book at a convention, then you need to follow the timelines of the convention, in my mind, for it to be realistic. And they did not follow the timelines at all. So that just really annoyed me as well. Because like, you know, you have this convention that takes place. It was either a three day or four day weekend. And these people are like leaving the convention. They're authors at the convention. So they're supposed to be doing panels and stuff. And also, you know, mingling with people and whatever. And they're like leaving the convention for like hours at a time. And I'm just like, what? (laughs) So I, I don't recommend that one. It was not yeah. a good combo for those two. I just, I, I find it interesting because it's like, how do you break up the work? How do you mm-hmm. like, you know, because if like one person has a flow going, how does this person, you know, it's, to me, it's a little bit different if it's um the anthology. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a little bit different when it's that because you kind of like. It's if, a story. In right. A if I'm understanding world. correctly, you're mm-hmm. like meshing stories together yeah. where it's like you're trying to, it, it this case you're writing one cohesive book so Mm -hmm. yes and speaking of those two i was going to add it to our list i screenshotted they have a new book coming out called you are not alone so i definitely want to read and this is the greer person greer hendrix yep and sarah mckinnon okay i am to the list and so it's coming out 
Um, I... And it's like a standalone? This isn't like a series or anything? No. Yeah, it's a standalone. I would have to look at the date it comes out. I want to say March. <laughs> possibly. Cool. Um, Let's check if Netflix has it. Netflix? Or Net- oh my god. <laughs> Netgalley. Netflix, Netgalley. Maybe yeah. I'll make a movie out of it. Maybe it'll be on Netflix Which, one day. By the the other thing, <laughs> speaking of Netflix, kind of off topic, but what, we have a book that we want to read by Chris. How do you, do you know how you say his last name? Which book is it? Oh, the boy. B- boy B- 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 <laughs> yeah, that one. B- B- the B O J A H L I N or well, something. Well, he, yeah, he has a book called The Flight Attendant that is either being made into a movie right now or like a Netflix series. I have to, okay. I have to confirm that, but I've seen him posting about it on his oh. Instagram with um and I think he has some bigger actresses. Cool. So yeah, yeah it would be kind Read of the interesting. Book and then watch yeah. the movie or T V series. Yeah. Yeah. I'm up so. for that. Very cool. Awesome. Well yep, I'm still stuck at two stars. Sorry. Um like I said if someone I trust reads more and tells me to read it, I will give it another shot. But Yeah, and I I'm still at four because like I said I went into it with not as high of expectations as like other books knowing that it was like the 200 pages or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like Kim said, don't expect like this to be the best thriller you've ever read. Expect it to be kind of like a quick SVU type. Yeah. And type if you rate. love SVU and tons of people do, then this book might be perfect for you. Right. So definitely. So. Cool. Well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Comment. Yay, comment. And we will see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>